were, there were two movies. I think my subconscious blocked out the sequel. Spoilers for the lightning thief ahead. <laughs> channel. Today we are doing something that could either go super awesome or super terrible. Y'all have been recommending the Lightning Thief musical to me for such a long time now, as in like Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. I've listened to about 0.5 seconds of the cast recording ever, so today I'm actually gonna listen to it and I'm going to react to it. Question of the day, have you listened to The Lightning Thief? If so, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments down below. Like I said, I haven't listened to the cast recording, but I am actually a longtime fan of Percy Jackson. Not the movies. We don't talk about the movies. Growing up when I had that Harry Potter sized hole in my heart, I quickly found the Percy Jackson series. I had a ton of fun reading those in middle school. They were quick, easy reads filled with adventure. I really like Greek mythology, so it was fun to kind of have that sprinkled on in there. Actually fun or embarrassing fact, depending on how you look at it. In like eighth grade, I tried to naturally lighten my black hair with sun in because I wanted to look like Annabeth Chase. It did not go well. Anywho, uh, let's jump on into this and let's listen to Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. Okay, the day I got expelled. Ooh, thunder. I wonder if they're going to talk about lightning. Okay, very angsty, very irreverent, very cutesy, clever lyrics. Definitely feels like contemporary small musical theater. <laughs> Oh, that's my favorite lyric of all time. I like the harmonies a lot. I love the guitar. Something that I'm interested to see how the rest of the musical handles this is that there's a big world to set up in terms of like the rules of the world. That you have Greek gods, that you have these half-bloods, that you have camp half-blood. It's a lot to set up. It's not like you can go into this assuming that the audience has some sort of knowledge of this material. I'm interested to see how they're going to set all of this up. Okay, let's get back to it. It wasn't Dirty Socks or My Stepdad into it. I like how they have all this interstitial dialogue kind of setting up the world. They totally need that. Yeah, I feel like this is definitely fitting into to the archetype of off-Broadway contemporary musical theater. Catchy, clever lyrics, really cool like electric guitar based orchestrations, great harmonies, lots of riffing, and lots of screlting. I don't want to call it too early, but so far this is pretty fun. I didn't want to pay attention, my focus isn't- oh my gosh I forgot Percy has ADHD! That was one of my favorite things in the novels, the idea that society could see something in you that they perceive as a flaw, but that flaw is actually the thing that like makes you special or can save your life. That's such a cool point and something that I think a lot of like middle schoolers and young adult audiences need to hear. These lyrics are insanely wordy. If you're thinking about seeing the show, I think this might be one of the few times I would recommend listening to the album before seeing the show, because I think you might miss a lot of plot points based off of how quickly these lyrics are coming at you. Who plays the mom? Her voice is gorgeous and her tone is just like very warm. Aside from that, the song is nice. It's definitely one of those, I gotcha kid, I love you, it's gonna be really devastating when something bad happens to me. That's about it. It just kind of like happened. I love that they include so much dialogue, especially when it comes to shows that might not have a super long lifespan, or shows that were off-Broadway, or just generally shows that are difficult to see. Having that dialogue in there is so crucial to the audience understanding what's going on. Big fan that choice. I like that it's a little tongue-in-cheek and that it's calling itself weird and ridiculous, and rather than trying to take itself super, super seriously. It's fantasy, it's not supposed to be real. That being said, and I want to hear from you guys what you think about this. I feel like so many contemporary musicals don't try to face their material head on. Almost everything is a little bit tongue in cheek these days. It's almost starting to seem like the easy way out or almost a little bit lazy in storytelling. Personally, I think this was the right choice for The Lightning Thief specifically, but just in general, what do you guys think about that? Another terrible day. <laughs> Me when school starts. I love education, but not waking up super early. Oh good, a grouchy character song. Wait, is this George Salazar? Because if so, good on George. That does not sound like him at all. Oh 
my gosh. So it looks like the only people who don't double characters are Percy and Annabeth. Is this gonna be about like claiming the kids? Again, loving all this interstitial dialogue. I think they really need that. Again, very wordy lyrics, but I think that's kind of indicative when you have such a large world to set up in such a short amount of time. Loving that acoustic guitar though. It's nice to have like a real sound change up and it also kind of makes Luke sound like the good guy. Oh my God, Clarice. <laughs> oh, I hope she's super screlty. I don't know why, but it just reminds me a lot of Guitar Hero. Oh, okay, here comes the screlting. I am happy. Oh, that sounds painful. I mean, it sounds great, but like, that sounds painful. Like, you gotta be real steamed, real relaxed, real open for uh, that. <laughs> Lit guitar solo. I'd be interested to hear performers sing this off mic. I mean, some people definitely do have that tone naturally, and this might be the case, but in so many of these contemporary musicals, they're mixed so treble heavy to give it that kind of pingy sound. Please don't hurt yourself trying to replicate what you hear on these cast albums or any cast albums in general. Everyone sounds so different off mic. Okay, campfire song. I didn't know we were listening to Spongebob. R.I.P. in peace. I like how they're slowly building up Luke's character. You know, I liked all this dialogue at first, and I'm sure that it reads totally fine in the full show experience, like if you're watching the show, but as someone just listening to the soundtrack, yes, I have a very good grip of the plot, but I just wish there was more music and less talking. Is this gonna be a Percy Reluctant Hero song? Okay, the beat just dropped. What's happening here? This is the most unique song I've heard on the album so far. I think this is the most well-written song on the album. I'm, I'm just currently in shock and enjoying this. This is great. Very next to normal, very spring awakening, very bare, very just angsty leading man, young tenory boy. I am into this. So far, I am shocked at how well they were able to adapt this book into a a musical like it feels very very true to the source material especially considering how dirty the movie did us all I just remembered there were two movies I think my subconscious blocked out the sequel I think I read this is the end act one the score overall is very energetic very exciting it really captures the sense of adventure that I feel like is kind of difficult to transfer onto the stage well done Oh, that, that option up from Annabeth just took me by surprise, hardcore. Okay. These harmonies are super fun. We're lost in the woods and we'll never leave New Jersey. Mood. I will say at times the musical does feel a little young, which of course it's going to. It's based on a young adult series. Don't get me wrong, I am having a ton of fun, but it does read a little young for me. Are we getting an Annabeth solo finally? Kristen Stokes has a very interesting voice, very interesting tone. It's a little bit reminiscent of like Celia Keenan Bolger. I love hearing a real diversity in the voices we have on Broadway. I just kind of wish that Annabeth's big solo song was more, I don't know, maybe it's just cause it feels so slow in comparison to the rest of the score. It's a good song. I just want more for my girl. I like that in New York this season, we have three different actors playing Hades. I am into it. I don't know if the amateur rights for this show were ever available. This would be such a fantastic show for young performers. Loving this disco. Oh my God. Oh, I just go too hard. I lost my headphones. I feel like the score needed a little more diversity. Oh no, that Josh Groban joke. It's true. He's too good. His stuff will never die. Except for Great Comet. Press F to pay respect to Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812. I can't stop thinking about how many summer camps, how many community theaters, how many schools should be doing this show. Super fun. Maybe they could expand the roles so that instead of them being doubled by so many characters, it's just one character per person. I love Luke's character development in this musical. You know, it's so easy to just like write him off as a villain and never return to him. But they're giving him depth. They're giving him a real motive and they're making him sympathetic. It's not black and white. Okay finale. Bring on the monsters. Ooh, if that's not a metaphor for life. This is a fantastic finale for this show. Wrapping everything up, throwing in a metaphor in there. Yeah, this is great. So now that I finished my very first initial listen to Lightning Thief, what are my thoughts? First and foremost, I hope amateur licensing for this show is super available, super fast. I love how true to the book they made this adaption. Again, so many Percy Jackson stands were really disappointed in the movies. This feels like more than just a love letter to the original series, but like a true thoughtful adaptation of it onto the stage. The lyrics are certainly very cute and catchy, and I think they were able to cover a lot of narrative ground in a relatively short amount of time. The show definitely does feel geared toward a younger audience, which is totally fine, but 
personally, it feels young for me. I think they need a lot of that interstitial dialogue to set up what's happening, but it makes the listening experience to the cast recording a little less fun. I genuinely really enjoyed listening to that. I don't think I'd put it in like my top 30 or top 50 cast recordings, but I think it was a lot of fun and very nostalgic. It immediately took me back to middle school. I think if I found this show when I was in middle school, or if it was around when I was in middle school, I totally would have loved it. And I'm really excited that it's coming back to Broadway and that more people are going to be able to see it, especially young audiences who might fall in love with musical theater because of it. Anywho, that is my reaction to the Lightning Thief original cast recording. Again, let me know what you think about this show in the comments down below. Also, if you're new here and you love musical theater, hit subscribe! I hope you guys are having a great day. I love you so, so much. Break a leg and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!